Hi everybody, welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Today, a species profile on one of the most common, and especially here in the middle part of the country in winter, waterfowl species, and thought it's appropriate today uh, with all the snow cover across much of the United States to do uh, the profile on the snow goose. Uh, it, it, it probably, you know, lesser known than its much more widespread cousin, the Canada goose. Uh, the snow goose is a fascinating animal, and uh, it's some really cool stuff about it, especially uh, for here in, like, through the heart of uh, the the lower 48 in the winter. The, these birds are so well known for their white white bodies and their black wingtips, uh, and they're tremendous numbers that we see them in. It hadn't always been that way, but for the last, oh gosh, you know, 50 years, um, uh, their numbers have rebounded nicely and now their numbers are tremendous. And I'll go into that a little bit later, but first uh, I want to clarify something about the, the idea of them because it, it can be confusing uh, when you see them, especially when you see them in large numbers. You will mainly see this, uh, he said more of a medium sized goose. He's not as big as a Canada goose or as big as a greater white fronted goose, but the, the snow goose, uh, is uh, it, it, so recognizable because of the, 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 the white on them. And then it, people will see, no, wait a minute. I saw a bunch of these, uh, mixed in with all those white ones. It was really dark and, uh, and had a white head, but it had a mainly dark body. Well, this is a color morph. This is, if you want to think about black labs and chocolate labs and yellow labs, uh, this is the blue goose. Uh, and that is a, a dark uh, a pigment that is a gene that's locked a, 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 just one gene in the, the goose's body that uh, whenever they're born, they may have, it may be this dominant and it'll, uh, they turn out to be blue geese instead of just a classic snow geese. And here's a mixed flock of them on the water up at Lus Bluffs National Wildlife Refuge near here. And I don't know if you can see my pointer as I'm moving it around, but right here about dead center, there's a nice example of a blue goose mixed in with a lot of these snows. Uh, up in the upper left here and in the front are a bunch of Canada geese, which everybody's really familiar with. And just right behind those three Canadas on the left is a, is a blue goose. And then there's a greater white fronted goose behind it. I know the image is kind of dark on a very cloudy day, but uh, you can you can pick out the, the blue geese here among the snows. And this is a... a, a, a a pretty good example of, you know, a mixture of them on the water. Um, what we famously here, we see this huge migration coming down in the fall uh, when the, they, these birds nest up at the, on the Arctic tundra. So they're up at the top of the world where they nest. And once those freezing temperatures uh, start to come in and they know, I mean, Daylink tells them it's going to get really cold, really frozen. We got to get out of here. And they, those birds start moving south. And here in, in Missouri, in Kansas City, we are right uh, at a prime flyway for them. They follow, once they get down uh, in, you know, in their migration and they head south, they lock into flyways along major rivers. So we have the Mississippi flyway and we have the central flyway. Uh, with a lot of geographic uh, uh, markers for them whenever they're migrating. And they tend to get funneled down those two major river systems, the, the Missouri and the Mississippi. And so Missouri, the state of Missouri gets tons of these birds uh, in, in the winter months, the fall and the winter months, until things freeze over. Uh, and, of course, they, they're mainly going to feed on grains. They uh, uh, disc uh, uh, corn fields and, and soybean fields and grain fields. They they when they, they they will be on the water in huge numbers while their food is digesting and spending the night on them. But during the day, early morning, they, they take off and they go out into the farm fields and they feed. And then after, oh, uh, noon, one or two o'clock, they start returning to the refuge in huge numbers. And, and when I mean huge numbers, I mean... Uh, you can see them in hundreds, you know, uh, dozens or hundreds. Uh, you, and, and it, <clears throat> you can see them in thousands, uh, a, a tremendous uh, wave of them. 
uh, uh, and you can also see them in millions. Uh, yes, our that refuge. I think this picture was actually taken in March, especially in return migration in the spring. That's when the numbers really tend to peak uh, up at Los Bluffs. It depends on water levels and things like that, drought conditions all. But uh, this is, uh, I think it was taken when the population was hitting about 1.4 million on the refuge up there. And it just shows that it, it tends to biomass on there. And what they're typically reacting to when you see this now, it, it, it can be them coming back in from feeding, but when they're on the water, they will be disturbed with by bald eagles, uh, especially come flying over the flock and it gets them up and they get up and they swirl and they conk and they, they fly around uh, trying to confuse the eagles and then they settle back down. And I have a video that Carrie shot a couple of years ago up at the refuge and I'm going to play it and I can't evidently I can't talk during that. So I'm just going to play some of it and let you listen to the, the sound of, and this is only a few thousand uh, snow geese. Can imagine what the, uh, this amount of them sounds like when you listen to this snow geese at Los Bluffs National Wildlife Refuge in Northwest Missouri. Quite a sight, quite sounds. That the word cacophony comes to mind. <laughs> it can be deafening whenever you you're talking about you know a million. Uh, whenever there are a million, it, it's quite. It, it, it's a spectacle of nature, and we love seeing it. Um, and they, it, it happens pretty much every fall here uh, up at the refuge. The only times I've I've been the 32 years I've been going up there. Uh, in, in, in severe, severe drought years, there's just not enough water for them, but their typical conditions are just huge. Now, one of the another uh, real familiar sites, uh, and I, I, I actually showed this picture during my program about uh, bird names, group names. These are skeins is what this is known as, these large flying Vs of snow geese. And again, this is up at the refuge as they're coming in and flying. They they fly in these V formations to conserve energy. Uh, the lead bird is taking all of the brunt of the wind resistance, and it passes on that saving so the, the birds behind him, and they switch out and, uh, and take turns as lead bird. So uh, we see this quite a lot. So we're going to go back to this because there is one bird that is very much like a snow goose that, that will be mixed in with them that uh, you have to separate them out. Uh, this is a classic uh, snow goose. And when I talk about the identification between these two, I want you to really focus in on the bill and notice this grin, this black grin look gape um, in the bill on the snow goose and a pretty long bill. Well, the other bird that looks a lot like them that we get here in winter mixed in with them is the Ross's goose. Now, you guys out to the west, you see a lot more Ross's goose than we do. Um, the, the, notice this bill. The bill, it doesn't has no gape or smile in it as, as, as the snow goose does. And you can see that grin and that one back, the juvenile bird back behind them there. Uh, that's a juvenile snow goose. Well, this is a Ross's goose. And the bill is also much shorter and stubbier. And the other thing to look at is right up against the feathers uh, of that bill is gray. And, it, and then the rest of the bill is orange. And that's not the case with, with the snow goose their bill is all orange from tip to the right up against the feathers. Now, so Ross's geese are, are much smaller, and uh, here are three of them. 
uh, and here's a, a juvenile snow goose behind them and, an adult, and ones that are in transition. Uh, but this is three Ross's geese together, which is kind of hard to find uh, in, in flocks, and especially when you're talking about tremendous, huge flocks trying to pick out uh, the Ross's goose in them. And you think, oh, well, Ross's geese are smaller. I just have to pick out the small geese. Well, now, unfortunately, that's not the case all the time because uh, within snow geese, there are small individuals and large individuals, just like in humans. And, and so you may have a small snow goose that you will be fooled by uh, to think it's the Ross's goose, but you really need to look at that bill. Um, then the grin is, if the grin is there, if the gray is up against the, the tech. They, you know, like I said, these birds are hardy. They, they nest in the, at the top of the world, uh, they withstand really cold temperatures. And in my uh, recent program on how do these birds survive such cold temperatures, well, remember, I don't know if you, you watched that video or not, but I talked about the birds like snow geese and, and a lot of those cold weather birds, a lot of birds, period, add feathers during the winter. They have a lot more feathers uh, on their body during the winter months because they, it helps for extra insulation. And, of course, the the uh, their legs, the capillaries are really, really close together. So the cold water coming up from the feet and the warm blood coming down from the heart mixes together and uh, they are we're, passes each other and warms each other up. So there's no shock to the system as the snow goose, uh, the cold blood runs back up to his heart. So uh, they they can withstand really cold weather. Um, the the bald eagles that I mentioned earlier, uh, follow them down because you figure with 1 million birds, just 1% natural death, the birds fly hit together, they are older birds or sick birds. Uh, the the, the Bald eagles have made a living of follow, following these huge flocks of snow geese and just cleaning up the dead ones. Uh, they, yeah, they do. They will kill a, a healthy one every once in a while, but most of the time there's just so many dead ones uh, or, or dying ones because just natural uh, death. It, it, they, the eagles take advantage of that. So that's why we see eagles so much with the with the snow geese and migration. So hope you enjoyed the program. If you did, please give us a like, give us a share if you're on YouTube. I hope you've subscribed or will subscribe. Share them if, with your friends and let them know about us. Um, thank you so much. Come by. Let's talk birds.